Hello, Harvest Time family and my internet friends. The Lord bless you. This is Good Friday. It's Good Friday because we know that Sunday's coming. We know that Jesus has the plan to deliver us and set us free. And the whole gospel is the good news. But the title of the message is uh, for you, the Bible study on Friday, is Three Crosses and Two Choices. In life, we have choices, constant choices to make. Right there in Genesis, there was a tree of life and a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And you and I have choices to make uh, whether we're going to serve the Lord and love the Lord and do things His way and, and die to self. And, you know, we have to allow our old life to be crucified so that the new man can come forth in Christ Jesus. And, uh, and it's so dramatic when Jesus is on the cross paying the penalty for our sins. He was an innocent man. He was all God, all man. He, he did this for us to show us a perfect example of, of sacrifice and, and victory. But there were two men that were crucified next to him. And I'm going to read from Luke chapter 23, verse 32 through 33. It says, And there were also two other criminals led with him to put to death. And when they were they came to the place which is called Calvary, they were crucified next to him. And the criminals, one on the right hand and one on the left. And these are two men that um, did some wrong things, apparently, and they were paying the penalty. Um, and and they um, had an opportunity. It's, it's almost like Jesus is so slow to, you know, to wrath. He is so patient. He wants all men to come to repentance. And even during this coronavirus, it is such a powerful time to press in and to eat from hopefully the tree of life and learn some things, go over some scriptures and, um, you know, spend some time with your with your family, playing some games, uh, get into some card games. Amen. Uh, but 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 make this uh, a divine opportunity. And it's interesting that normally we uh, carry the cross. I carry the cross and we go out with a group uh, of believers from harvest time. And, and we go around this, the cent center of our city and present the gospel with tracts and tell people that Jesus loves them. But on this, and, and it hasn't happened since we took this pastorate, that it's rained. It's raining today and nobody's out on the streets. And, and so... The Lord saying, "Son, carry the cross in your heart." Of course, but but that's where the heart of, of Jesus. We need to uh, understand that the Lord is coming. Uh, we choose, you know, what cars we drive. We choose the the homes we live in or apartments. We we choose our classes, our level of education. We we make all these choices. We choose our our marriage spouse, and uh, we choose, you know, which career path we're going to take. And we're making these choices, but put Jesus first. Let's learn from these two criminals. The first criminal, uh, he's mocking Jesus. He's mocking Jesus on the cross. And uh, he knows that he's an innocent man. And he's scoffing. He's scoffing at Jesus. And, and one of the criminals that says in Luke 23, 39, that was hanged next to him, was railing at him, saying, If you be the Christ, save yourself and us. So in other words, putting God to the test. Save us. Do it for myself. Basically, he wanted salvation uh, but but to do it not himself, he wanted to, c to come through somebody else. Listen, salvation is never going to come through your mother, through your father, through your brother or your sister. Salvation has to come from you as an individual. We need to learn to pick up our cross and follow the Lord and take personal responsibility. And the grace of God will be there to love us, to forgive us, to give us wisdom and insight. But, but this one, the, this criminal, he said, save us, you know, but basically I don't want to do anything. You do it for me. And it's just not going to work that way. And, and by the way, there are only two destinations. <laughs> There's only two destinations. It's heaven or hell. 
Do you want to live in heaven? Then begin to do the things that will help heaven to come down in your life. What's the Lord's Prayer? Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it's done in heaven. God wants to bring heaven down to us. He wants to give us a heavenly resolve. But we've got to pick up our cross. And nobody else is going to do it for you. Government's not going to do it for you. Your neighbor's not going to do it for you. Your pastor's not going to do it for you. You and I have to take a personal decision to believe in Jesus, get born again, and say, Lord, here I am. Lord, use me. Teach me. Help me to be your servant, your disciple. Uh, but he was uh, making excuses. And it's not going to end well for the, the first uh, thief next to Jesus on the cross. Likewise, there were priests that were mocking Jesus. And they were saying to themselves in Mark 15, 31 and 32, and they were saying, the scribes said, um, you know, he cannot save himself. Let Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross that we may see and believe and that and that they were um, they were reviling him, making fun of him. So religion makes fun of righteousness. Religion makes fun of holiness. And, uh, and, and religion wants to live the easy life, you know, both, both sides of the fence and, uh, or walk on the fence and not make a decision. And, uh, but no, the, we have to make a decision if we're going to bring heaven down into our hearts and to receive the, the grace, the love, the forgiveness that God has for us. So we don't want to do it like the first uh, thief or, or the, the scribes and the Pharisees mocking him. We want to be like that second man. And uh, that second man, he was so humble. And uh, in what he said in Luke 23, 40 through 42, and he answered and he said to him, Will, will thou, uh, God, seeing that thou art the same condemnation um, that, that we're under, he's rebuking the other thief. And he says, We indeed uh, justly, have gotten what we uh, what we're being given. For we said unto Jesus, we receive the due reward for our deeds. But this man has done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. He humbled himself. He saw. Christ, he saw his sin. He's the the sin was too great. He saw the love. He wanted to receive forgiveness and grace. And he asked the Lord, Lord, will you remember me in your kingdom? Oh, the Lord. He wants to save. He wants to heal. He wants to restore families. He wants to restore individuals. He wants to, amen, cure the coronavirus in our land. But he wants my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, then will I hear from heaven and will, will forgive their sin and heal their land. Oh, let this Good Friday be a time of reflection, a time of repentance, a time of, of just giving it all to Jesus, saying, Lord, you be the Lord of my life. Lord, take this and pour out your spirit upon my life and my family. Thank you for what you've done for me. And we're just going to close with, uh, this is from Luke 9, 23. It says, Jesus said to them all, all of his disciples, if anyone wants to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. And, and that's what he wants us to do. You know, all of his um, disciples who became apostles, they, they had to deny themselves. They had to learn a new culture, a new way of life, a new way of love, a new way of forgiveness. They had to learn what the grace of God is. And, and they did that, and they did it so well. That's why we have our Bibles. And, and, and thank God for our godly parents and grandparents. And thank God for our, our leaders and that God has given us good pastors and leaders uh, that can uh, role model Christ to us. But we have to pick up our cross. We have to begin to live the life. And, and it's the good life. And, and there's resurrection power. 
And, and so will you join me right now? I'm going to ask if some of you out there, if you if it's your time to get born again, if it's your time to, to say yes to Jesus Christ and be like that wise uh, thief, the, the criminal that, uh, that got saved and because he had the opportunity and he got saved. He got to go to heaven with Jesus. He's, he's right there with him now. Amen. So if you want to, to give up your selfish life and, uh, and, and, and stop being a mocker, and, and, and accusing God or, or others, but this is your time to take personal responsibility, then say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and forgive my sins and cleanse me of myself, of my selfishness. I want you to be on the throne of my heart. I want you to be the Lord of my life Take over, Jesus. I want to feel your love and your peace and your grace. Lord, I believe that you died for me, for my sins, so that I could be free. Help me, Lord, now to receive the freedom and the peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pray that uh, some of you out there that, that heard that message on, on Good Friday, it is a Good Friday. Jesus died and then he rose from the grave victorious, that you could be victorious. And, and, uh, and we're praying for our country. We're praying that uh, we're going to get through this coronavirus. And I, I'm really hoping and praying that we can be back to church together on, on May the 3rd, Sunday, May the 3rd. So let's press in. God bless you. Have a wonderful Friday. And remember what Jesus has done for us. So it is a good Friday. Amen.